Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. In today's episode, I'm gonna be telling you everything you need to know about surgical masks, P2 masks, and N95 masks. Following on from my last video on the novel coronavirus, I've received a huge amount of requests saying, Dr. Nora, please can you tell us what the masks mean and how do we put them on? So this video is dedicated for you guys out there who want to know everything about the masks. First up, let's talk about the surgical mask. Now over here, I've got an example of a surgical mask. As you can see, it is quite thin. And the original purpose of the surgical mask is for surgeons to use during surgery because it helps to keep out bugs from the surgeon's mouth and the nose going onto the patient during their sterile field during surgery. Of course, you don't want to create an infection, but it isn't able to keep out viruses because it is not tight fitting enough on the face. And I'll demonstrate to you how we place this on. So the surgical mask is placed around the nose and you press in with the metal so it's closely pressed by your cheekbones and then you place the elastic bands over the ears like so on both sides and finally bringing down this area to cover the chin but as you can see there is a lot of gap seepage of air from here and also down here as well and hence that is why it's not suitable for protection against viruses so that is your surgical mask and the way that you will remove it is obviously taking off from your ears folding it over like so and disposing it in the bin. Let's move on to the P2 or the N95 mask. Now you may have heard these two words being used interchangeably, but why are they being used interchangeably and what do they even mean? Well, the N95 and the P2 mask are very similar. They both block out at least 95% of small particles. The reason why one is called N95 because it has gone through USA testing and the P2 has gone through European standards. So for example, over here, I've got two N95 respirator masks. As you can see, this N95 respirator mask is much thicker than my surgical mask. And it's really important that if you are using an N95 or a P2 mask that you place it on with a secure fit because if it's not placed on correctly, it's not going to offer you that protection that you are after. What's also important to note is that the N95 masks and the P2 masks come in different sizes. For example, this N95 respirator is a standard size and this N95 respirator is a small size. So this should only be used on children, whereas this one should be used on adults. Obviously, getting your size right is important because, well, let's face it, if you haven't got the correct size, you're not protected well. So let's go through how to place on an N95 respirator mask. As you can see in the middle here, there is a thick material and at the top there is a small, thin metal piece which you can mould and bend according to your nose shape, like so. So how does that work on yourself? Well, let's go through it. So first of all, you need to place the mask over your nose and you need to press in so you can get a nice tight pinch across your nose and then across your cheekbones as well. This will allow the metal to take the shape of your face and therefore give you a nice tight seal. Following this, you need to pull down the mask on the bottom and then you need to tie up the two sides around the back. And then you do the same for the bottom as well. Try to ensure that the top tie is above your ears and the bottom tie is below your ears. This will help to give you a nice tight fit. Once you've tied around the ribbons, press again on your face to ensure there's a tight seal. Once you're satisfied, you now need to perform a fit check and that includes taking a deep inhalation. So it, once you inhale deeply, you should be able to see that your mask is moved inwards because of that negative pressure. So let's take a look together. As you can see, my mask goes inwards, meaning that there is no seepage from around my mask. The next thing to perform is to perform an exhalation test. So place your hands across your mask and blow out as hard as you can and have a feel with your fingers to see if there's any loss of the air. As I can feel no loss of air when I exhale, I know that I've got a tight fit mask. Now you can imagine that talking with this for prolonged periods of time can be very, very tiring because the mask is so tight on the face, 
it does mean that you have to take deeper breaths and some people do get what we call mask fatigue. Now, as you can imagine, it does get quite hot and sweaty under here and you should cease using your mask once it's got moist or it's wet because it no longer becomes effective. It's also really important not to touch the outside of your mask with your fingers because that can also transmit the infection somewhere else. And of course, these are disposable masks, so they're not to be used or worn again or even washed again as I have seen on social media. You cannot wash your masks and reuse them again because they're no longer effective. And of course, for all of you fashionistas out there who might wanna put it around your neck in between patients or or, you know just put around the neck because it looks cool that is a complete no-no because of course you might be transmitting some of the virus around your neck to your mouth into your nose again and that's not going to give you any protection whatsoever once you finish with your mask untie it from the back take your mask off safely fold it in half and dispose of it in a closed bin make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after you've used your mask so that's the N95 mask. And now it's time to move on to the P2 mask, which is essentially a mask that has been tested by European standards, which gives you exactly the same coverage as an N95 mask, i.e. it blocks at least 95% of small particles. And it's really important to read the back of these P2 masks because actually they cover for different things. For example, here I have with me two different masks that do exactly the same thing. They are P2 respirator masks, but not only do they cover for your 95% of small particles or airborne particles, but they also cover for, at the back, pesticides, fumes, and odors. Just like the N95 mask, it's really important that you have a tight, snug fit around your face when you're wearing this mask. And it's really important to perform a fit check as well, which is very similar to the N95 mask. So let me show you how I put on my P2 mask. As you can see on the inside of this, it has got a spongy section, which is gonna be nice and comfortable for my nose because if you're wearing this for a prolonged period of time, it can be quite heavy on your nose. And at the top here, you can see as well, very similar to the N95 mask, it has a metal strip which you can bend, it's quite malleable so you can shape it around your face. What you'll notice here is it also has a valve compared to the N95 respirator, which doesn't have a valve. So this in theory will make it a bit more comfortable to breathe in for those long periods of time that you may be wearing it. In addition, it does have some elastic bands that you can place around your head. So the first thing is to do is to place it around the mouth. And as you can see, without moving the metal at all, it doesn't fit very snugly. Let's take a look. There's plenty of space here. So what I'm gonna do is press down on the metal. Yep, and give it a nice snug fit so it's around my nose and my cheekbones. And now that it's got a nice snug fit, I'm going to place over the elastic bands across my head, starting with the bottom one, and then the top one. So one going above my ears and the other one going below my ears like so. And now I'm going to readjust my mask at the front to make sure it's still nice and secure. And my chin is nice and secure. And now I'm going to perform my fit test. So for this, I'm going to take a deep breath in and just check that there's no air seepage around my cheeks or around my chin. And I can't feel that any air is escaping through these areas over here. And now I'm going to do my exhalation test where I'm going to place my hands across the mask and have a feel to see if there's any seepage of air around my mask. And no, I have to say there is no seepage around the cheeks or around my face or my chin. The only loss of air I'm getting is through the valve. And as I'm talking, I am starting to get some mask fatigue. It is quite stuffy in here. It's quite hard to breathe. You do have to take slightly larger breaths just to compensate for the lack of oxygen that's going in. So again, it is designed to be used for short purposes because I myself, I've had first-hand experience with my staff members who have been wearing their N95 respirators all day and they're actually getting headaches from them because they're just not getting enough oxygen in. And they're also finding that they're more dehydrated as well because when you wear one of these, you're less likely or you're less inclined to drink water because you don't want to take it off and get a new one. So these are just designed to be used by healthcare professionals that are in contact with patients who have got really severe symptoms of the novel coronavirus or who might be coughing and spluttering because it gives you the best protection rather than a surgical mask, which may be used for people who have got very mild symptoms. So there we have it, that's the fitting of the P2 mask. Again, to take it off, you need to just remove the elastic bands 
And when you are taking it off, if you are in a contaminated area, make sure you have left that area first of all, because you don't want to be exposing yourself to those particles that might still be in the air. So keep your mask on, leave the room, take off the mask like so, and dispose it in a bin that is a closed bin and wash your hands with soap and water. Alrighty, so there we have it. We've got the P2 Plus mask or the P2 respirator with added protection against fumes, pesticides and odors. We've got the N95 mask, which is your N95 respirator. And we've also got the surgical mask, which has currently been advised for patients who have got symptoms of a mild cough, whereas patients who are exhibiting very severe symptoms of pneumonia or coughing and spluttering should be wearing an N95 or a P2 mask. Oh, it's so good to have some fresh air. <laughs> so the question that you all want to know, do I need to invest in one of these? Do I need to drive 400 kilometers away from my local town to find myself one of these masks? Currently, as of today, the Chief Medical Officer for Australia has suggested that Australians do not need to wear masks. There have been 15 reported cases in Australia so far, five of which have been discharged, and the remainder are said to be in a stable condition, and none of them have been admitted to ITU or ICU, which means intensive care. The Chief Medical Officer has also said that those patients who have been diagnosed with the novel coronavirus only exhibited mild symptoms, and none of them had really those severe symptoms that we've heard about in China, where the coronavirus has exceeded a death toll of over 700 people. So what does it mean to you? Well, the best thing you can do to protect yourself is hand hygiene. We cannot stress this enough. Hand hygiene means washing your hands thoroughly with soap and water, under running water for at least 30 seconds, really getting into the nails, into the wrists, into the thumbs as well. Typically, if you are having symptoms of a cough or a runny nose and you don't want to spread your bugs to anybody else, this is a good call to have a surgical mask because it will protect yourself from infecting others. Um, it has been said that patients who have got symptoms of coronavirus who might be experiencing mild symptoms may benefit from wearing one of these. Or if you yourself have recently returned from a country that's been affected by coronavirus, please make sure that you self-isolate and speak to your doctor or your local emergency department before attending so that they can know to put you in isolation as soon as you arrive. I hope you found this video useful and as always if you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below but for now take care and stay healthy.